AFSE is the uh, American Friends Service Committee and it's a Quaker organisation that works on behalf of Quakers in America and um, implements a lot of programmes both in the United States and uh, globally. So internationally we have programmes in Asia, Africa, Latin America and the Middle East and all our work um, is based on the Quaker principles, primarily social justice and uh, peace and equality. And uh, AFSC was established in 1917 following the First World War, so we're um, celebrating our centenary uh, shortly. Well, Quakers started uh, strongly campaigning against um, slavery and were very successful um, in uh, uh, the anti-slavery movement and since then they've carried out numerous campaigns uh, including um, starting in uh, I suppose in the 90s and gathering momentum against uh, landmines and uh, creating a great coalition um, on uh, phasing out the use of landmines. Uh, they've worked very hard in the US and the UK recently to campaign for the rights of same-sex marriages in religious establishments. Um, and uh, in America a lot, lot of work on um, the, the migration rights and the treatment of people uh, in prisons as well. Um, I'm based in Phnom Penh in Cambodia uh, and we, the Asia region consists of five programmes so I'm responsible for managing the country representatives that manage and implement those programmes. I'm responsible for uh, coordination with our head office which is in Philadelphia in the US um, and I'm responsible for developing our strategy in the region and supporting our programmes to uh, work towards similar goals as far as is realistic and possible. Uh, my, well, my first connection with Quakers was through my grandparents. My mother's parents were Quakers, so I knew Quakers a little from my early years. And then um, Actually, my grandmother always wanted me to work uh, for peace and work with the Quakers, and it was something when I was younger I wasn't interested in. But uh, I, I finally I worked. I started working overseas in Asia in various positions for I'd say about ten years from '99, and then I went home to the UK. I'm from the UK and started working for Quaker Peace and Social Witness in the UK which is the, the British equivalent to American Friends Service Committee. So I, I mean, I joined them because I completely appreciated and was aligned to their Quaker values. And then after that experience, um, for three years, I saw the advert for the position I'm now in, Regional Director for Asia, and it combined you know, my commitment and respect for Quaker work and my experience in Asia. So I, as soon as I saw the advert, I really felt that's, that's the job I'd love. So I was drawn by, I mean, really the commitment to peace and equality in the organisation and uh, its focus in Asia is perfect for me. <laughs> Yeah, I mentioned earlier we have five, but uh, I won't explain them all in detail. That uh, very interesting to me is our program in North Korea, um, and this is a program that was established in the eighties, um, and and it's an agricultural program. So it began uh, actually in response as well to the famine in the nineties. I mean, it expanded, and uh, we we support, as an American organisation, very rare, and uh, we support four farms to innovate 
with different techniques of growing rice and different crops to increase productivity. And these are sample farms that if they um, are successful in what they're doing and share their results, then they could, you know, the innovations could become implemented nationwide. But another element to the programme is, um, is, is to, to promote friendship in some ways between the US and uh, North Korea and to, in the US to promote uh, the human face of North Koreans. So we take back stories of the people we work with, the farmers we work with, their families to, to the US and uh, encourage um, well, policy makers and others to reconsider the attitude towards North Korea. So that's one example that has a very practical element and an advocacy element. And then um, another, another example of our work could be, uh, we have a couple of different programs in Myanmar, Burma. One of them is uh, support that we give to teachers who teach in what are called monastic schools. And these are the schools, the village schools, that uh, the children who, I suppose the poorest children who can't go to the government schools because although they're free, maybe they can't afford the uniform or the books, they can go to the monastic schools. And typically the, the teachers in monastic schools are less qualified than the government schools. So we provide training to teachers through partners in Myanmar and uh, the training promotes child-centred teaching and uh, promotes critical thinking and environmental awareness. So uh, through the teaching we're hoping to <laughs> support children to develop um, questioning with some political questions about their own country and to be environmentally friendly. Achievements within my work with AFSC. I joined uh, AFSC in September 2013. So I think um, I've been with the organisation for a year and a half. And for me, uh, what I feel is uh, an achievement so far in my capacity has been to bring our team in Asia together to form a much stronger uh, team who collaborate more and we reflect on each other's programmes and we look in more detail at the impact we're having and have a more detailed discussion on considering our resources are finite, how can we have the greatest impact? How can we measure what we're doing? And this makes our work more focused. It, uh, it's, it's not based on assumption, but it's in based on facts and improvement. And I think as a region, we work now much better together and it, has, and it shows in the, in the way the projects are implemented. Well, I, I mean, that's a lovely question uh, and it explains partly why I wanted to work with them. I think they're not comparable to NGOs. We have, um, our work is niche work in, we're not really service providers. A lot of our work is quite political and because our donors are very supportive of our principles, we have a lot of flexibility. So we can, we can implement work that other organisations can't. Um, into if a lot of our work promoting peace deals with conflict, um, and we can work with all sides of a conflict. So, for example, there are some uh, tensions in Myanmar between Buddhists and Muslims. We we can work with the unpopular figures. We can work with some of the people that are promoting hate speech, people that others wouldn't necessarily want to work with. And as Quakers, we see that of God in everyone. We see good in everybody. So we try and work with the bodies who are often depicted as the enemy or the oppressor. So I think that's a part of the work I enjoy. And NGOs can change their um, goals depending on 
who the director is, whereas a faith-based organisation is committed to the principles, whoever the people are uh, developing the strategy or directing the organisation. I know that with AFSE, you know, they've spent a hundred years focusing on pe peace and social justice, and I know for the next hundred years that will remain the focus. So for me, I enjoy that consistency and long-term commitment. Well, it's first, it's very different to, <laughs> to the UK. <laughs> Primarily the uh, climate is very different, which I love. And um, the, the work, uh, I'd say uh, for myself, I work far harder in Asia and in Phnom Penh than I do when I'm in the UK in some ways, because uh, our working hours are naturally a lot longer. The job's quite demanding, so it involves evening work and weekend work as well. Whereas I think in the UK, even when everyone's very committed to their work, you tend to start at nine and finish at five, and, it's, and, and compared to working in Asia, it feels like quite a short day. What's, what is harder in Cambodia, for example? Well. The government is, um, you know, it's a democratic system and in some ways you have more access to ministers and uh, higher level politicians, but I'd say there's, uh, there's far less transparency in Cambodia than in the UK and corruption is endemic and it, if you, even if you work with the organisations that's committed not to become engaged in bribery in any way is is very hard when it comes down to it to operate without becoming uh, enmeshed in some some of these dynamics so i'd say that's quite hard and also the commitment of the politicians to their goals is sometimes um it's not clear quite actually where their commitments lie whether it's with personal interest whether the long term um improvement of the country is their interest. So I'd say working with the government's a bit, uh, a bit tricky, but, but more accessible. So if you find, if we find, what we try and do is find strong people within the ministry that we're in, uh, involved with, whether it's the Ministry of uh, uh, Environment, we're also working with the Ministry of Commerce. Maybe not the minister, him or herself, but uh, other key people that are uh, empathetic to our goals and seem to be committed themselves and they're, they're the ones we try to build relationships with. <laughs> um, actually I don't miss very much. I don't miss the weather in the UK but uh, I think something I miss is uh, you know, sharing a sharing a sense of humour. If I'm in the UK, if I go into a shop or take a taxi or speak with someone in the street, you can exchange a few words and uh, understand each other. You can have a joke with someone in the street that you don't even know. I really enjoy that. That would never happen in Cambodia. <laughs> yeah, although the people are very friendly, uh, the sense of humour is quite uh, different. Yeah.